What's happening guys? Coming at you from downforcehomeshop.com as always. And in this video, we're gonna be going through how to determine the correct amplifier wattage for your system. But first. All right, so we'll jump right into this and uh, I guess break it down for you as best as I can, as simply as I can. So uh, when you're looking to get an amplifier for say, we'll use a single subwoofer setup for an example. So usually you want to closely match the output of the amplifier uh, with the RMS power of the subwoofer. So let's say we have, um, and there's also a factor of what brand of audio equipment you're running because you know you have say like road gear or something cheap like that at Walmart that we know that if they have a, a they'll have an uh, amp that actually puts out 500 watts but they'll have on the box that it's a 5000 watt amplifier so that's the only thing that kind of skews this but we'll just say for the sake of this video that we're gonna talk about reputable companies that are going to accurately rate or underrate their stuff so for instance we'll use a sundown uh, SAV212 dual one uh, sorry dual two for this example this subwoofer is rated a thousand watts RMS and this amplifier in front of us the downper sound JP 13 is rated at we call it 1300 watts yes it will give you more power than that but so that's going to give you that's the close to the RMS power rating for the subwoofer and uh, the standard output uh, at one ohm for the JP 13 is going to be close to that so that'd be a good match on that um, but obviously if you got a subwoofer that the ohm load can change everything so say you got a dual one ohm sub and you wired that sub at half ohm then this amplifier is going to put out over 2000 watts so then you're going to be getting a lot more power on the sub and what happens here is if i mean that subwoofer can take it but it's just because i know that it can and i, I would know how to play it but if you played it for too long and you didn't know what you were doing say you were clipping it and and it would end up heating up the subwoofer faster than and also failing faster than it had to or if you ran it at more rms power yes these subwoofers can take power because people will ask what can the say sav2 really take i know sundown is underrated what can it really take well it's hard to tell people exactly what it can take because everybody's knowledge of core audio is different you don't know what enclosure they're going to be using you don't know what their electrical is like there's so many factors that go into it you can't just say oh the Sunout SAV212 can it can handle a 3000 watt amp sure but for how long like you don't know you don't know the person's electrical you don't know the person's vehicle you don't know their box like their wiring all this stuff you don't know it so you're really just throwing something into the wind hoping that it works out for them um, you hear this a lot with like big boy subs say the sundown zv6 uh, subwoofer the nightshade or whatever oh i know so and so that's running i mean you can use me as an example like i'm the worst person when it comes to a um a good example because people are like oh what uh what are your subwoofers in your tahoe rated at like 5000 watts rms and what amplifier do i have on each one the JP83. This amp does over 12,000 watts on one sub. So what happens with this? Uh, if you don't know what you're doing, that it can you can heat your subs up super fast, and you could. I mean, I could blow all my subwoofers in like two minutes if I wanted to. If you just turned it all the way up, clipped it, distorted it, they would all be toast in probably two minutes. But the more experience and i'm not perfect by any means i have sub failures here and there amp failure here and there like it, it happens it's core audio equipment but the longer you play with something and the more accustomed to it you get you know kind of what to look for and you'll hear the frequent songs that i play like i play these songs because it works well for my system it keeps the subwoofers cooler and another reason for wanting to have a lot of power on tap is usually you can get the subwoofers moving a lot with a smaller amount of power being used from the amplifier so 
that way in my hope or my theory is I don't ever want to get into clipping because as soon as you get to clipping to be able to start moving your subwoofers like you want if you're clipping it it's not gonna last long you're gonna heat your subwoofers up fast um, but anyway that's why I have so much power on tap with my Tahoe to hopefully give it a lot of uh, cushion or headroom to be able to like not have to clip it to really get it crazy um, but that's gonna be the biggest things uh, like on power like pairing your amplifier with the subwoofer obviously if you had say two sundown SAV2s you would want to get an amplifier twice this size at least um, the JP 23 version 2 something like that but again if you have more experience if you know what you're doing the box is proper the electrical is proper you could easily go up 50% or even double the RMS power rating um, and be okay but it, again it depends on how long you're gonna be playing it how hot it is outside it's not just a cut and dry answer unfortunately but hopefully that has helped you a little bit uh, if it has let me know in the comments below and if you have any other uh, questions for me you can ask them down there and if I see them I'll try to answer them for you appreciate your support as always at down for sound if you need anything hit us up downforsoundshop.com or you can give us a call 702-701-9800 see you in the next one later happening guys if y'all enjoyed all the hot content that you saw in that video be sure to follow me on youtube facebook tiktok instagram under the life of price and also down for sound shop on facebook and instagram and don't forget snapchat i'm jpd4s on there so be sure to check me out there we'll see you in the next one later